Hello and welcome to Behind the Bearcat this is the podcast where the Northwest Missouri State University Career Services Office chats with Northwest faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends to hear about their career journeys, how they got to where they are, and how they became Bearcats. I'm Northwest Internship Coordinator Travis Klein. And I'm Hannah Christian, the Assistant Director of Career Services. And on our podcast today, we have Devontae Mosby. He is a Kansas City Bearcat. He played basketball as a forward uh, on the men's basketball team here. And he graduated in 2018 with a degree in biopsych. He is now a financial advisor with Edward Jones in Kansas City. Welcome, Devontae. It's great to have you here. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I always imagine like the crowd going wild and we need a crowd or something. Travis, we need that like, ah! I, I could probably find some sound. Yeah. <laughs> we need Matt Glory in here. I know, right? <laughs> All right, welcome, Devante. So uh, uh, my very, a lot of times my very first question that I really love to hear um, is, what was your first job ever in your life? Not, not, pay, not your parents, uh, but like real first paid job. Yeah. Um, my first paid job was in a call center. Um, it was my sophomore year of high school, and I got a job. I knew the owner. Um, his son played on a, a basketball team that I was involved in, and he gave me a job. And I was pretty much a scribe, so I just sat in a uh, in a computer room and typed in information from uh, different companies and did that for hours on end. So that was my first job. What types of calls were they taking? Were they like sales calls or like technical, like troubleshooting calls or? Yeah. Yeah. So we did some tax things um, for a season and then they moved me to the call floor, um, which was a lot for a 16 year old me, I will say. Um, and I was taking calls for a bunch of different companies. You know, one call might be me selling a, uh, might be me selling an air conditioning unit. The next call would be me selling women's clothing um, and them calling in for customer service and things like that. So, it, oh, it, wow. It, yeah. <laughs> so that probably prepared you for college note taking at least. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. That is really lengthened my patience, man. Anytime you get calls for, uh, from angry customers, you got to learn how to, how to control, your, control your, what you say and uh, control your patience for sure. Yeah, exactly. So talk to us about basketball. Did, have you, did you always, did you love basketball as a kid? Like what, how did you and basketball have like begin your relationship? Yeah. Um, me and basketball, we go way back to <laughs> the blacktop. Um, basketball in Kansas city. I grew up in, in inner city, Kansas city. Um, and that was just what everyone did. That's what everyone wanted to be good at. Um, grew up watching Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson and every kid wanted to be just like them. So I lived about a block from my uh, elementary school and there was a blacktop basketball court there where all the older kids would play. And um, I would just go and watch for, for hours on end. And then after a while, I got a chance to, to play a couple times. And before you know it, I was trying to play the older kids and beat the older kids. So that's where it all started. And were you, were you tall? You're pretty tall, right? You're six, five. I mean, mm -hmm. that maybe that's middle of the road in basketball tallness, but that's pretty yeah. tall for you. Know, so were you yeah. taller than the other kids or? I was taller than the tallest kid in my grade for sure. Um, I was a, a bigger kid than most of the kids. So um, had a lot of muscle to me. My nickname at home is Fatty, so if that says anything <laughs> from a child. But, yeah, I was taller than most kids. Uh, I've worked really hard. I really just took it serious from a young age. I don't know what it was. So did you play in high school as well then? And, and mm -hmm. um, then obviously you played here. Um, so yeah. talk to us a little bit about that path of playing basketball at a high school level, like going from the court to, to like, organized ball and then maybe, like, um, on up to Northwest. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't play organized ball until um, until middle school. It was seventh grade, I believe. That was the first time I ever got on a team. And um, that, that actually 
was a big time learning experience. Like I, I never knew how to rein my game in. I never knew how to uh, not foul everyone. <laughs> Even throughout high school, I don't think I really figured it out. But um, I started playing in middle school, had a lot of fun. Um, but the way that I grew up playing was just really all out, kind of angry type of play. And once I started playing with an organized team, it kind of allowed me to learn the different skills on on how to slow down, on how to um, share the ball with your teammates, how to play under control. Played in eighth grade, and my body was pretty pretty awkward at that moment. Um, I'm into high school. I played varsity my freshman year and uh, continued to just work on my game and try extremely hard. And I don't think my game took a turn until about – uh, my junior year in high school when I started playing for this competitive team um, in Kansas City and we would go Monday through Thursday we'd have practice Monday shooting Tuesday practice Wednesday shooting Thursday and we'd leave for like a tournament on the weekends and my coach there would spend a lot of time with me in the gym and as well as my high school coach would, would help me to open the gym in the morning and things like that and I just really got a lot better so even throughout high school, I was still progressing since I didn't play since I was a, on an organized team um, as a, a young kid. Some people started like five years old. So, so how'd you get to Northwest? Was that through basketball or had you discovered Northwest academically and then decided to do basketball? Or Yeah. Yeah. So out of high school, uh, my recruitment process was, was pretty challenging for me. My mom in the midst of getting offers and, and all those different things, my mom ended up getting breast cancer. Um, so I was looking to go f far away and see how far basketball could take me from Kansas City. Um, but when that happened, and it was really sobering. So I ended up going to William Jewell out of high school, which is a liberal arts school uh, in Kansas City. And after two years there, I looked to transfer and Coach Meyer, who's now coaching the women's team, and uh, Coach McCollum, they reached back out to me. They recruited me pretty heavily out of high school, um, and I decided to stay closer to home. And they reop reopened that conversation, and I came on a visit, and uh, the rest was history. So it matters who you know, right? We, we always try, kind of try to hammer that home. Like, um, you know, don't, don't look at relationships, A, as transactional, by any means, but um, by building relationships with people, you you don't know what seeds you're planting for your future. We always try to yeah. share that, especially Definitely. with students. Definitely. Um, life, if there's anything I'm learning, life just changes. Uh, seasons change and circumstances change. And even out of high school, um, Coach McCollum, he recruited me pretty heavily. And um, I think in a different world, I would have went to Northwest out of high school uh, if I knew what I knew now. Um, but I know that that kind of was a hit to, to them after all the time they spent recruiting me and how honest and uh, genuine they were. And um, once that, that opportunity opened up again, when you talk about it's, it's who you know and, and keep, keeping those, keep fostering those relationships, I sat down with Coach Mack and – of all the schools that were recruiting me the second time around, he was the most honest. He was the most genuine. Um, he even talked about me redshirting um, after having some pretty solid seasons at a different school, um, which was a very honest and, and humbling thing. And the reason why I came to Northwest was just knowing that, you know, even after going to a different school initially out of high school, that, that they would give me another shot and they would give me an honest shot, not promise me everything in the world to get me to go to their school, but truly tell me what it would be like playing there. And um, I thought that that was really awesome. So I'm really glad that those two relationships between the coaches came back around. So did you, so if you're playing basketball, working on your game, especially later in high school, you have, you know, you're on a competitive team. Um, talk to me about working. Did you work at the same time you were playing, especially maybe in high school? Um, or how did you manage that? How did you juggle that? Yeah, so I worked my first, my freshman year and my sophomore year, and things started to, to really pick up. I also played football, 
in high school. So it pretty much ended up being sports all year round. And my mom made some some serious sacrifices as well as my brother uh, for me to continue to play. Uh, we didn't have much growing up, but my mom definitely sacrificed a lot to make sure that I could play competitively and, and get a full ride scholarship. And that was a big goal of ours. So I wasn't able to work during that other than odds and end jobs. Sure on the house and for family friends and things like that so when you were playing so so you come so you you've been at jewel so when you come to northwest for the first time you graduated with the bio psych degree was that something you had started at jewel like what interested you about that area of study yeah so i started as a biology major at jewel and I wanted to continue that because I knew I wanted to, to go into the health profession. Um, that I, was, I had my mind set on that. And I just felt like it was an area that, you know, if I had to pick one, I'd at least want to be working with people. Um, and I also would want to be working and trying to help people in some kind of way. And I had my mind set on that at high school. I transferred and decided to continue it with that and pursue physical therapy. So whenever I came to Northwest, I just transferred some of those those credits um, and kept it going, kept it rolling. So biopsych meaning like you kept that biology aspect that you've been working toward a jewel, but then I'm assuming like you, psychology is very specific, like the science of the mind, I guess, understanding mm -hmm. how people think. Um, what did you, what were you thinking uh, as far as having that major, like after basketball or after you, you left sports, what were you thinking? I know you said the health field, physical therapy. Um, yeah. Edward Jones, as far as I can tell, doesn't do physical therapy. So how did yeah, you no. kind of walk me through that path? Yeah. So the, the, the bio psych track fit. Um, kind of the prereqs for physical therapy school, you'd end up having to take the GRE, which involved a, a bunch of different uh, aspects of schooling. But whenever you're dealing with people, I think it's it's an amazing, fascinating, yet it creates more, question, uh, more questions. It's like mysterious as well. But the mind is just so intriguing to me and how, how we think and how we feel, why we think and why we feel. Um, man, that's, this is a very complex thing. So I saw the value in that and I decided to go the bio psych track and fast forward to now, I think most of business, I mean, I'm at Edward Jones and we do finances and things like that. But a lot of times when I'm not crunching numbers, I'm really just working with people on their emotions and talking to them as a friend, making them feel comfortable and heard. And a lot of those things happen whenever you understand just how the mind works. Maybe another thing to pull out of that, because I, I see this a lot. Um, the, one of the beautiful things about sports is that you can see, like you have immediate feedback. My mindset or my mind is in this place. I get this result mm -hmm. in my performance, right? Yeah. Um, and so to be able to translate, I, I see athletes who don't have a lot of work experience, but they're able to translate that my mind performance into like my performance and they yeah. have a leg up sometimes on people who've had jobs, but don't have that mind performance connection. Yeah. That's self-awareness. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, when playing sports and when, you know, playing at Northwest is no easy feat. Um, I have friends who play at, you know, big time division one schools, um, a couple are in the NBA and the NFL. And I talked to them even about our, our preseason process. And if you talk to any Northwest basketball player, they'll tell you about preseason with Coach Mack. Um, but exactly like what you're saying, you find this, you find the connection between all the preparation mentally that I have to do and the physical outcomes in my performance. And you have to start tweaking that and making adjustments and having a self-awareness like I was saying of of where those two connect and what you need to adjust but when you know yourself I think it it helps you to, to understand and read and get to know how others are feeling around you as well so that's a, that's a really good point so what was your high point of northwest basketball high point of northwest basketball <laughs> there's so many 
And I'm not just saying that. I know that sounds really cliche, <laughs> but I absolutely loved my time at Northwest. Um, I think a really high point was after the national championship game. Um, we had all the families and a little reception upstairs um, and fans and everyone got to hang out. And I think it was cool just seeing my, my family there, our small little family unit, and then all the other families that, that came out, you know, from redshirt freshmen all the way to seniors, just celebrating, having fun, past players coming back and supporting you. Um, I think that that was a really cool high point in my career. But, man, there's just so many. The bus rides were were some of the, the funnest things where we would just have fun and, and hang out. So I couldn't, I couldn't give you – I could give you a, a laundry list of, of awesome moments. One of the things we always like to ask is, you know, you've been there and done that. You're successful. So what advice do you have for maybe students coming into Northwest who are maybe going to be student athletes or going to be busy students um, yeah. to be successful like you were? Yeah. Um, I would say hmm, – one thing that I would say is to, to really try to prioritize a few things. I think if you – if you want to be great at something, and obviously there's a ton of things to do, you just listed a few things. You got to be good at school. You got to be good at sports. Um, you got to have a kind of a social life and, and make friends and build relationships. And you can't do all of those things perfectly in one day, but you can do a little bit of each of those things every day. And the way that it is for a student athlete, you know, you show up and if you want to be good at school, well, you got to put in extra work. And then you want to be good at sports, well, you got to put in extra work. Um, and without priority and without figuring out and making those few things most important, um, you can really get, get overwhelmed and get kind of swept away. So, uh, And then I'd also say really try to figure out who you are as a person. Um, and for me in particular, figuring out my faith whenever I came to school was, was very important. That's something that I don't think I took as – seriously as I should have my first two years but when I got to Northwest I found some really awesome friends and um, leaders around the community that really helped me flesh that out as well so those would be two things uh, figure out yourself and figure out what you want to prioritize awesome so um when so you're playing basketball you're winning national championships ah! everything's on a high so you graduate from college what was your mindset as far as getting a job right out of college um what yeah. were you thinking what was your preparation and then what what did you do what was your path there yeah so I was preparing to go to graduate school that was my I was going full force at that and um it's kind of funny how how things change obviously I'm sitting here in my office at Edward Jones um not a physical therapy clinic by any means so I was working some odds and end jobs in town ended up in the yard of Ron Houston and Dennis Dow who are awesome people um, and they were talking about their investments um, just talking about it discussing it here I am doing work and I'm looking over my shoulder like what the heck are you guys talking about like money can you can use money to work for you and and obviously be very generous like um, like those two are and um, from there on I just caught this itch for money management and I saw that my my heart to help people uh, really could be be fleshed out in this career um, so I decided to um, network talk to different people who understood it they ended up taking me to um, someone in town still his name's J.R. Kurz he's a Northwest grad and he sat me down, got me started investing, and just continued to teach me. And um, he, at, at the end of it, he ended up saying, you know, I, I really think that you would be a, a great fit for this. Um, and I, here I am looking at him with his, his four little girls, his wife, and he's all over town just having fun and enjoying them. And, you know, I thought, yeah, maybe I could. So I went off and worked for a summer at a, at a camp that I worked every summer throughout college and then I decided yeah I'm gonna take this leap and and jump into Edward Jones so 
it's a it's a who you know type of thing for me. For so how do you get start? Let let's pretend like I, you know, maybe I want to have a fourth fifth career here. So I'm a student. Yeah. How do I get involved? Um, how do I start working at a place like Edward Jones? Do I do I just apply? Do they have positions? Uh, if I want if I want to become an advisor, what do I have to do? Yeah. So there's this awesome track with Edward Jones. Edward Jones is known for known for having um, a really good training program. And there was a, a track for people who just recently graduated from college or are changing careers. And you hop into that, that track and they pay for your, um, you do a lot of intensive training. So you have to get a, a few certifications in order to be a financial advisor. It's pretty intense, takes some pretty big tests. And throughout that, they train you. You have sessions Monday through Friday, um, checking up on you, people and different resources, giving you calls to make sure that you're okay with your studies. And at the end of that, once you get all your certifications, um, I went out to Tempe, Arizona to the home office and we learned some classes about what we'd be, we would be getting into as, as financial advisors. And um, from there, you just, they keep giving you step after step after step after step. It's just a matter of applying to the firm. I'd say have a conversation with JR or, or Jeff or some of the people in town um, just to see what it's like and see if it'd be something that you'd be interested in. That's what I would say to uh, if you were looking to change careers. Shout out to JR and also to Jeff. And maybe yeah. we'll have JR on here sometime soon. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely tell him the hop You on. should. That'd you be should. Great, <laughs> that'd be a great guy to interview. <laughs> Do you have any – so – in that transition from basketball and school into work, what transfers over well? What, what was something that surprised you maybe about going into a full-time working world? Yeah. Um, what skills transferred well? Maybe what didn't? What did you have to learn that was new? Yeah. Um, I'll start with some things that, that I didn't really understand. Um, and I think it was from – so whenever I got done with basketball um, – and you leave Northwest, which is an amazing place. Um, but I came back to Kansas City. It's a pretty big city. Like, you got to drive, like, 20 minutes, there, which is kind of crazy. Um, but whenever I decided to go into Edward Jones, a big part of the commitment is knowing that it's going to take a few years for you to build your business. Um, and I had to, had to shift from thinking in semesters where, okay, Something's going to happen. A few good things are going to happen, and it'll happen in, like, two months. You know, we're planning this. We're doing that. Awesome. And then at the end of the semester, you get a break, and you get to run it back again. In life after school, the, the time frames extend, and your expectations have to shift um, for when you want to see something happen or when you want to accomplish a goal. And I think that that was really tough for me just getting out of school um, to make that shift. So people who are graduating, people who are about to graduate within the next couple of years, start thinking about and practicing on what are some long-term goals that I want to accomplish that may take one or two whole years of consistent effort as opposed to, you know, short sprints. Because um, I'm seeing that life turns into quite the marathon after school. Uh, so that's something that I had to adjust to. Um, another thing I had to adjust to with being a student athlete in Northwest is, is super awesome. Um, people love you. Kids adore you. They look up to you. Once after school is over, you know, that kind of changes and you become important to a few people. And it's important to just pour into those relationships. And it's a humbling thing going into business right after school, being a student athlete, because that success and that notoriety just isn't there anymore um, and you have to shift and make a shift and pivot and start to build that build your business that way and just continue to work hard at the fundamentals that that made you a good student athlete uh, which kind of leads into the good things that transfer um, in order to play basketball in northwest you got to work extremely hard um, and you also have to really sacrifice for the betterment of the team that was one thing that coach mac always harped on and i think it was why we were so successful is that from the top to bottom, everyone was making a sacrifice for the betterment of the team and in order to reach the goal. And that's something that I continue to, to do now, even as I have my business, but also 
try to serve my family. And I started a family after getting married a year ago. So that sacrifice thing, sacrificing for a goal, sacrificing so that you can um, achieve something greater, definitely transfers over. You've also gotten involved with the alumni board recently. So how did you get involved with that? And what are, what are you doing with that position? Yeah. Um, I got involved. I reach out, reached out to Bob. You guys had him on a podcast mm-hmm. um, not long ago. And I really just wanted to see how I could get involved. Um, I, there's no, you could ask any of my friends whether they went to Northwest. If they went to Northwest, then they know. Um, but all my friends who didn't go to Northwest, uh, they know how much I love being a Bearcat and um, how proud I am to, to say that. And just the community and the family that culture that we have um, up at Northwest. So I just wanted to see how I could serve, see how I could get involved. And um, I joined the Kansas City chapter. And this past, earlier this year, Bob asked if I'd want to join the alumni board. And I accepted. (laughs) Awesome. That actually is a perfect lead up to one of my favorite questions, which is, what does it mean to you to be a Bearcat? What's behind all that culture? What's behind being a Bearcat for you? Hmm. Being, I would say being a Bearcat um, is to be a giver and to be proud of the university, proud of the community that you're a part of, um, and to, to give all that you have so that other people can experience it the same way that you did or even better. Um, the reason why I came to Northwest, I remember the conversation with Coach Mack. He said, when you come here, um, the question that you'll have to ask yourself, it'll be less about what you can get from Northwest, and it'll be more about what you can give to Northwest. And that will determine how how awesome your time is here or how, how bad your time could be if you cho- chose to come here and not give. And year after year, practice after practice, class after class, the more I gave to the community and the more I gave to my teammates and my classmates. Um, It's funny how the more I got back, the more, you know, warm fuzzies, not necessarily um, money or or anything, any tangible things, but just great relationships, great people. So um, I think to be a Bearcat means to be a giver and also to be very proud of your alma mater. Excellent. Well, if somebody would like to reach out to you, maybe with questions on, on financial planning or, you know, mentorship, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. You guys can uh, find me on there or Instagram. Just my name, Devontae Mosby, Facebook, um, any way that you can reach me on those social media, social platforms. Um, and I'd love to connect you with, with people. If you're coming out of school and you need to at least have a conversation about what career path you might choose or um, I meet business owners and individual investors all over Kansas City. And I'd love to make connections with Bearcats and see if I can help you land a position where you want to. So yeah, I'm on all the social media platforms. Just give me a call um, and I'd love to chat with you. Excellent. Any last tips or tricks or words of wisdom that you can leave us with? I I think I've kind of started, I want to give people like a platform for them to give a great soliloquy if they want to like just, just wax eloquent. This is your time. Huh? Man, I would say for me, um, life has not been easy. I haven't been here super long. Um, but also understand that, uh, at the end of the day, we're not here very long. So if I had any closing words, it would be, man, really, really take some time to, to figure out your faith. That has really changed my entire life. Um, me put my faith and trust in Christ and um, actually getting around people who could show me how to do that and what that looks like. Um, and it's taken me from being super angry, um, super anxious Um, Not to a perfect person, but to a person that's working through those things and um, learning to enjoy the adventure of life before I get out of here. So that would be my closing words. Awesome. Thank you so much, Devontae. It's been great having you as a guest. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. 
All right. Well, that'll do it for another edition of Behind the Bearcat, and we'll talk to you next time. Hey, guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to follow on your podcast platform of choice and on YouTube. Also, click the little notification bell on YouTube so you never miss an upload. And you can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and we have a LinkedIn page.